Ja, sa du. Openet. Ja. Yeah. Already looking a bit funny. Um, it's going to be kind of a bit funny because I'm supposed to be talking to the camera, but you guys. Um, this is for Sophie, and only Sophie has access to this recording. So, and then you guys obviously experience it live. Hello. Hello, Sophie. You... Hello, future Sophie. I can't film the other students, but you are allowed to see me and the whiteboard. Oh god, this is confusing. Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to do the presentation like this. Um, I've tried to adjust the camera best I can, um, but that's about all I can really do for now. Um, we're going to do the slideshow. I'm uh, just saying hi and see how it works. Should be fine. Cool. I'm going to turn the light off now. Uh, when I'm, I'm talking to the camera, when I'm talking over there, all right? Okay. Cool. Let me just check the picture's still coming through. It's my first time. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, I'm going to sit here. And also, this classroom is better because presenting in here is much easier because I can sit right here. And then with valency, I have to always have my back to somebody. It's a real pain. That'll be on the recording. Okay, all right. Well, um, this slideshow isn't strictly related to project management, but it's got some information in here that you might find useful for talking points for your assignment. I'm really hoping that my audio is getting picked up. Picked up, picked up, picked up, picked up, sorry, on the microphone. I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a nutter with this so just please I can't really oh, I'm just going to get on with it okay um, so we're talking about teams in this one okay uh, high performing teams synergy um, don't worry about these formulas um, because they aren't relevant to our discussion point this is a bit more relevant so um Hmm. We've got characteristics of high-performing teams, okay? Um, they share a sense of common purpose, right? Obviously, a team that performs effectively is going to be a team that's on task. Um, make effective use of individual talents and expertise. Ken, if you're a PHP wizard and I'm doing a project with you, I'll probably get you to do the PHP. That's making effective use of individual talents and expertise. Uh, have high balance, well, sorry, have balance and shared roles, okay? Not one person having all the responsibility. It's a very another important aspect of a high performing team. And you want to be high performing because the alternative is not high performance and that just means we're wasting our time. Uh, maintain a problem solving focus, okay? Um, again, we are problem solvers as programmers, so um, maintaining that focus is important. Uh, accept differences of opinion and expression. Again, um, there are going to be disagreements in a project naturally on the direction of where it's going. Hmm. But we'll find generally that there is usually a compromise that we can come to that benefits the project in a um, mutually satisfactory way. Okay. Encourage risk taking and creativity. Um, this is a big one, and it doesn't just apply to project management, it applies to a lot of things, okay? So, I'm not saying um, to take unnecessary risks or take dangerous risks, but risk-taking creativity are two sides of the same coin, really, when you think about it. The, we can take risks without endangering the project's life cycle, and we can be creative without necessarily detouring much from our original point. Number seven, set high performance standards. We can ask for the moon. Oh, bloody hell, um, that's gone through quickly. Let's go back. When, I, when this slideshow says set high performance standards, what it's really saying is, if I tell my employee that he needs to write me um, a full stack website with back end, front end, JavaScript, PHP, HTML5, um, it's going to have React, it's going to have a web app, 
um, and it needs to be fully inclusive, all designed from scratch. And I need that done, that work rate. So that's a 10, I need a 10 every week. Just because we set high performance standards, okay, for ourselves, sometimes we won't achieve those. But by setting our standards high, we will come close to that, which is better than what we would have achieved if we had set no high performance standard in the first place. Does that make sense? So if I aim to be a 10 out of 10 on my work rate, and realistically I can only be 8 out of 10, when, in comparison, if I just set a normal performance standard and I worked at a solid 5, I'm getting more performance out of myself. See what I'm saying? By pushing your performance, even if you don't necessarily get to where you're going. And number 8 is identify with the team. Okay? We'll get to it. Hmm. The five-stage team development model, okay? Project activity and group process. So um, this slideshow has chosen to use um, this model. Hang on, sorry, this chair keeps going up and down. What is going on? Sorry. Oh, that's not it. All right, I've got to switch this chair out. Sorry, Sophie. I'm going to have to put this as a private YouTube video because it's not going to send by email otherwise. I'll keep the camera angle adjusted too much. I'm sure it's Cool. OK, so this slideshow has chosen to use a activity and process stage, OK? So in the beginning, we can see there's an orientation to the project. Um, two is sort of what happens when, okay, so in stage two, we can see there's an emotional response to the demands of the project, okay? If I tell you that you've got to design the next Facebook in a week, okay, do you think that's going to trigger an emotional response to the project? What do you think, Ken? That would be uh, impossible. Hmm. You'd have an emotional response because you'd say, well, that's unreasonable. I yeah. can't do that. And that would cause an intra-group conflict, okay? So again, um, not too familiar with this model, but the way that I'm assuming they're trying to say this is that each activity has a process and a reaction that leads to a next stage, okay? So don't worry too much about that. Just thought we'd try and break down one stage a bit. Okay, conditions favoring development of high performance project teams. 10 or fewer team members, voluntary team leadership, membership. So um, choosing to be a part of a team is a big thing. Uh, hmm. It's favorable if people want to be where they want to be by choice. You guys are on this course by choice, for instance, okay? And that's favorable for us. Um, continuous service on the team, full-time assignment to the team, an organization culture of cooperation and trust, members report only to the project manager, all relevant functional areas are represented to the team, the project has a compelling objective, it's also very important, and members are, speak, are in speaking distance of each other. Again, we're all in speaking distance in this room. I don't think you remember. It's more of a literal point, I'd say. Okay, the punctuated equilibrium of group development. First meeting, phase one, transition, phase two, completion. Start midpoint deadline. You can sort of see here on the left, on the y-axis, you've got the performance from low to high. And as the phases continue, the performance increases, right? Between, between phases. I would personally disagree with that chart, but again, that's how they chose to classify it. Creating high performance project team. We recruit team members, okay? We conduct project meetings. We establish the team's identity. Create a shared vision. Build a reward system. Manage decision making. Manage conflict. And rejuvenate the project team. 
and this is what leads us to superior performance. Okay. Um, building high performance project teams. I'm loving that 2000s word art. Well, that's a 2000s clip art, I'd say. They always used that same format, didn't they? Oh, throw them back. Right. Recruiting project members. Factors affecting recruiting. Importance of project. Project management structure used to complete. How to recruit. We ask for volunteers. This is in a corporate environment, okay? So usually we ask for voluntary members in a corporate environment. Um, who to recruit? Well, we pick people who have good problem solving ability. with somebody to make things happen. Project team meetings. Okay, so um, a few considerations here. Establishing ground rules. Mm. I know this seems like a really rudimentary one, but I'll tell you what, more projects, more meetings if we had a talking stick. Now, I know that seems like a bit of a secondary school, primary school thing, but if I have the talking stick, it's my turn to talk. Then if I pass the talking stick to you, it's your turn to talk. They should include that in a few more project meetings, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, because otherwise, we have people talking over each other. And if people talk over each other, we come to conflict, and we can't make decisions effectively, okay? So, again, it's simple ground rules, and sticking to these ground rules, that makes our project meetings more effective, okay? Better use of our time. We plan decisions, we track the decisions, we manage the change in these decisions, you know. We've chosen to use React, although we are thinking that due to the market research that indicates our users will mostly be on iOS devices, Swift. That's something that would come up at a project meeting like that. Relationship decisions and managing subsequent meetings, okay? Establishing team identity, effective use of meetings, co-location of team members, and uh, creation of project team name and team rituals. Okay, there might be something that you will do together. Requirements for an effective shared vision. Big I here. Communicate, strategic sense, inspire others, and passion. Okay. They all kind of link to each other. Interesting little diagram there. Management project, blah, blah, blah. managing project reward systems. Group reward, who gets awarded what as an individual reward. How to make the reward have long lasting significance. How to recognize individual performance. There are a few ways that we can do this. <coughs> hmm. Letter of commendation, sometimes does it for people. Public recognition for outstanding work. So public praise is actually quite quite nice, especially when it's in front of peer groups. Um, desirable job assignments, again, is another way of motivating people. And um, increased personal flexibility. Okay, and those, those are a few ways that we can reward people um, in a project environment. Some of those will be more appropriate than others. Okay, orchestrating the decision-making process. Hmm. Here we can see that the way that they've defined the decision-making progress is to identify a problem, generate alternatives to the problem, reach the decision, and follow up on it. I don't know what that was for a while, but that's a um, people sat around a meeting board. It's kind of abstract, though, isn't it? Hmm. Managing conflict within the project team. Okay. Encouraging functional conflict, functional being the key word here. Encourage distant by asking tough questions. Bring in people with different points of view. Um, interesting. Um, I only just learned something today. What's that? Um, turns out Linux is bigger than Windows. Yeah. Doesn't surprise me. 
tunnel for one because it's one major thing. Apparently, Android is is used or uses Linux. Yeah, uses the Linux kernel. So and that's the that core the operating system. system. Linux is bigger than Windows because that means that Linux is the only thing bigger than Windows. Yeah, Linux is open source as well, so everyone picks up and uses it for different purposes. But um, yeah, interesting point. Um, we can talk about that more after. But designate someone to be devil's advocate. Okay, that's an interesting thinkable alternative. Really, what this is doing is pushing the boundaries of what happens in project management environment, okay? So, if I ask a tough question of a project, it's not that I'm trying to undermine that project, it's that I'm trying to make it more robust, okay? Ken, let's say you're developing a website, and I go, how's your website going to handle 10,000 users if you're hosting at home? What's your answer? I don't expect you to have an answer, but this is the thing. I asked you that tough question of an unlikely scenario, and you gave me an answer to it. So now you're thinking in terms of robustness, and that's going to make our project more stable. It's going to make our project less likely to fail in the event that tough questions happen. Okay? Sometimes you need to ask those tough questions. Um, and then obviously there's dysfunctional conflict, which I'm sure we've all seen somewhere. Mm. We mediate it, arbitrate it, control the conflict, accept the conflict, and eliminate it. It's not that easy, but those are the key stages of it. Uh, conflict intensity of the project life cycle. Um, we can see most of it is during the middle. Mm. In the planning and execution, we see quite a bit. Early on, we see it a little bit. Um, we mostly see conflict in schedules, okay? and we see it less in, um, depending on stage really, but I'd say it sort of follows a um, negative correlation, um, but we see more interpersonal conflicts towards the end of the project. Um, the priorities seem to go on a curve and then drop around delivering. So it's interesting, really, where we get the most conflicts. But um, I would say that planning and execution probably have the highest concentration of uh, tallest pillars. Mm -hmm. Rejuvenating the project team. Okay, informal techniques, institute new rituals. Take an off-site break as a team from the project. Viewer inspiration message or movie. Um, have the project sponsor give a pep talk, okay? These are a few ways that we can rejuvenate the project team. This doesn't always work, but here are some informal ones. We've got more formal ones. Hold a team building session facilitated by an outsider to clarify ownership issues affecting performance. That's actually quite a handy thing to do. Engage in an outside activity that provides an intense common experience to promote social development of the team. You could take the company go-karting or paintballing. My friend, um, who works at a restaurant in Truro, um, they have a group um, go-karting session. So they'll go out to go-karting and, and they'll, they'll, they'll drive go-karts together. Um, another like thing that. I just learned. Yeah, what's that? Turns out the top 500 most powerful Google computers all run Linux. on a version of Linux. Yeah, no, of course they will, because Linux restricts your hardware. The, the Linux is designed for home use and for server. It's not designed for scientific use, which is where your Linux is so much more flexible. Um, yeah, but um, again, we have some good techniques here of rejuvenating the project team, because eventually everybody's going to get sick and tired of the project, no matter how exciting and interesting it is, okay? And these are a few things that we can do for that. Managing virtual project teams. What are some of the challenges? Okay. Developing trust, exchange of social information, and setting clear roles for each team member. Developing blah, blah, blah. There's not an F in there. Effective patterns of communication. Okay. Keep team members informed of how the overall project is going. One of the things that we can do is all work in one room. If we're all working, be on the same page. 
Don't let team members vanish, okay? If it's a voluntary project, you'd like to assume that people will stay there, but some project members can disappear, and in that circumstance, we have to improvise. And improvisation is probably your biggest unspoken skill in a project, because you never know when you're going to have to improvise on a decision. Establish a code of conduct to avoid delays. This is more of a corporate thing, but you can always do that. Um, establish clear norms and protocols for surfacing assumptions and conflicts, okay? What happens when there is an argument that becomes dysfunctional in a project management environment? We take them both outside and, we can, I don't know, solve a jigsaw puzzle together. And then at the end, have a discussion about their feelings. Share the pain. I know these seem like rudimentary <coughs> formal methods, but at the end of the day, anything that's effective as a pattern of communication or conflict resolution is worth doing. That either would go really well or really poorly. Um, I'm going to go with not great. Um, there are more effective ways, but I like that. I like that style of thinking. Um, Twenty-four hour global clock. Okay, so um, one of the things that can happen in project management is that we have a team working internationally. So we've got some folks working in the east coast of the United States, people working in Australia, and people working in Scotland, okay? How are their timelines gonna add up to each other, okay? We've gotta pick suitable times so each person, okay, as you can see, we've identified windows in which would be the best time for each person to do what they've gotta do, okay? Now, we can't contact people during downtime, and as you can see, Scotland, Australia, and the United States, and the East Coast, they're all on different timelines, okay? So we've got to take this into account if we're working in an international team. Project management across countries gets complicated fast. And unless you stay on top of it like this, or have uh, a schedule that you stick to, you know, regular meetings, okay? Because like we can see here, um, a three-way conferencing window, um, the third one down, so let's say 7 a.m. in the United States, 9 p.m. in Australia, and 12 noon in Scotland. That is a good window, okay? We say we have one of those meetings every day. That means every day everyone is awake across the world and ready to join our interview, okay? And that can be a really handy way of ensuring that everybody is on the same page at the same time, because everybody's in different time zones, okay? That's interesting, isn't it? When you think about it, where it all lines up. Do you think so? Yeah. I think that's interesting. So, um, project team pitfalls, okay? Group think, so not having individual perspective, I think, is that. Bureaucratic bypass syndrome. One of the things that we like to do in projects, and one of the things that is common, right? It's bureaucratic bypass syndrome. And essentially, if we have a certain way of doing things, right, whenever, let's say, Ken, let's say we're working on a website and um, we want to add a new module to the website, a new web page. It's a web app that we've developed on React, right? But we've got, we've got a procedure of reviewing the code, commenting the code, merging the code, getting the code approved by a third party, and then having it committed to the initial repository, okay? And we go, that's going to take hours. We need to get on with this project now. So we bypass that traditional bureaucratic process and we just commit straight to the uh, public repo. Well, guess what? Because we bypassed the bureaucracy, and I'm not saying that bureaucracy is a good thing, but because we bypassed it, we've run into an error. There's a bug in our code that we didn't check because we merged it straight away because we tried to be more efficient. And in fact, we actually made the project back set by bypassing one of our one of our channels that we had established. So this is an important thing to remember. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Going native, again, going off the reservation. Um, just try not to do that. Team spirit becomes infatuation. Um, team infatuation. Uh, I'm not really sure how to explain that one. Um, I don't really know how to explain that one, to be honest with you. Team spirit becomes team infatuation. 
Team Love. I really don't know, to be honest with you. Something, a smart man than I could explain that. Um, so here are some of the key terms that we discussed. Brainstorming, dysfunctional conflict, functional conflict, group think, nominal group technique, positive synergy, project kickoff meeting, project vision, team building, team rituals, and virtual project team. This is all stuff that you can talk about when you're writing your report for your project management. Because remember I said the assignment is a report and then your project management documentation, right? This is all stuff that you can include when you're talking about theory, okay? So it all has relevance. Um, celebration task force agenda. Okay, not quite sure how that fits in, but there you go. And that's it. Um, okay, so the presentation is over now. Um, I'm going to... Hang on. It's going to be gliding across the screen. Um, I'm going to be um, putting this... Um, because I can't email this, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put it on my Google YouTube and then I'm going to send a link to Sophie. Okay, but only she's going to be able to see the recording because she's not here at the moment, so. Cool stuff. Um, and then for the rest of the lesson, I've, I've emailed an agenda to Sophie, but um, for the rest of the lesson, we've got, um, I think, some research to do on law, okay? But I will go over that in a sec. Well, actually, I could probably go over that now and have it um, uh, on the thing. So, uh, all right, since we're on, I'll say, since we're on that, because I'm thinking about project, I'm managing IT. Okay, all right, well, um, because we're pretty close to, um, because we're pretty close to essentially Christmas, um, what we can do is have you guys. Now, I'm going to double check to see if I've unhidden the um, sign up on Moodle. Um, okay, the formative task is unhidden. Um, what I'm going to do is unhide the assignment one. I'm going to unhide assignment one. Okay, sorry, I've got to talk to the camera as well. Um, okay. And I'll have you guys check assignment one out. Actually, I'll unhide the guidance, okay, not the assignment itself. And you guys can go have a look at that. And what I want you guys to do is to, obviously, I would think that you would email each other this, but you can have a look at what needs to be submitted for the assignment and identify any documentation that you might need to write. Does that sound okay? Ken? Does that sound right? So just, okay, right, I'll go on to the document. Make it a bit clearer. Uh, right. Okay. So, um, what we've got in the unhidden submission guidance. Um, under expected appendices, so your documentation, we've got things like um, meetings, risk register, analysis, development, code testing, design, artifact, that stuff that we're producing in the project, okay? But for part one, um, we're talking a little bit about, you know, our solution, our decisions made, and project management strategy. You guys will probably be about here, okay? Our options available. So you're identifying what you can do about the problem that you've proposed, right? I think it's a mental health app or something like that, right? So you're going to be about there. Read the submission guidance, okay? And there will be information on there on what you should start building, okay? Because what you want to do is build a base of work so that when this assignment comes along, you've got the documentation and um, anything else that you might need for the appendices, okay? okay. Submission one guidance. That will be the rest of what you're doing for this lesson. Any questions? Please ask them. Huh? No, okay. Any at all? Any at all? Uh, Sophie, if you have any questions, give me an email. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's a wrap. Um, and then the rest of the lesson is going to be you guys doing your own thing. 
asking me questions if you've got any questions. All right. And I will end my little recording.